The Octavius was a legendary 18th century ship said to have been found adrift by the whaling ship Herald on 11 October 1775. The story goes that the Octavius departed England for the Orient 14 years earlier in 1761. The ship successfully arrived at its destination, but when it came time to make the return journey, the captain made the fateful decision to gamble on a route through the treacherous and at that time largely unknown Northwest Passage. Despite this fateful decision, the ship was in good condition on its departure, but would never reach its destination. Its last recorded position was approximately 250 miles north of the town of Utkovic, Alaska, formerly known as Barrow. When the Herald found the Octavius drifting west of Greenland, they dispatched a five-man boarding party to investigate, believing it to be a derelict. However, once on board, they made the grisly discovery that the entire crew of 28 were dead. Frozen. Perfectly preserved. Legend has it, the captain was found sitting at the table in his cabin, pen in hand, with the captain's log in front of him. The last entry in the log was dated 11 November 1762. The ship had been lost, adrift in the Arctic, for 13 years. The Marlborough was an iron-built, two-deck merchant ship constructed in Glasgow in 1876. During the 1880s, the ship made numerous successful voyages carrying immigrants from London to New Zealand, often returning to the UK with cargoes of wool and frozen meat. On the 11th of July, 1890, the ship departed Littleton, New Zealand, bound for London, carrying a refrigerated cargo and a crew of 29 men and one woman. A ship's apprentice called Alex Carson was meant to have sailed on this journey, but fell ill before departure and was unable to join the vessel. Little did he know his brief illness would save his life. Two days after departure, the Marlborough encountered a ship called the Falkland Hill. Following a brief exchange with the ship's captain, no further word was received from the Marlborough and after some months was listed as missing by the Lloyds of London ship register. Popular opinion is that the ship had been sunk by icebergs, which were frequently encountered in the treacherous Southern Ocean, particularly in the region of Cape Horn. But a more macabre, if unsubstantiated, story persists that the ship was found floating adrift off Cape Horn by a sailing ship called the Johnson in late July or early August of 1913, 23 years after she set sail. The captain of the Johnson had this to say of the incident. There was no sign of life on board. After an interval, our first mate with a number of the crew boarded her. The sight that met their gaze was thrilling. Below the wheel lay the skeleton of a man. Treading warily on rotten decks which creaked and broke in places as they walked, they encountered three skeletons in the hatchway. In the mess room were the remains of ten bodies, and six others were found, one alone, possibly the captain, on the bridge. There was an uncanny stillness around, and a dank smell of mould, which made the flesh creep. A few remnants of books were discovered in the captain's cabin, and a rusty cutlass. Nothing more weird in the history of the sea can have ever been seen. The first mate examined the still faint letters on the bow, and after much trouble read, Marlborough, Glasgow. Further enhancing the legend of the Marlborough, her sister ship the Dunedin set sail for London two months after her on the 19th of March, 1890. She too disappeared without trace. The SS Beichimo was, and perhaps still is, a steel-hulled cargo steamer built in 1914 and owned by the Hudson Bay Company. The ship operated a trading route along the Victoria Island coast in the Northwest Territories of Canada. 
On the 1st of October 1931, at the end of a trading run and loaded with cargo, the Beichimo became trapped in pack ice. The crew briefly abandoned the ship, travelling over a half mile of ice to the town of Utkovic to take shelter for two days. But by the time the crew returned to the ship, it had broken free of the ice. On the 8th of October, the same thing happened again, only this time the ship was more thoroughly trapped, so the Hudson Bay Company sent an aircraft to retrieve the 22 crew. Fifteen of the crew, including the skipper, remained behind, intending to wait out the winter in order to recover the ship. However, on the 24th of November, a powerful blizzard struck the region, and after it had passed, there was no sign of the Beichimo. The crew concluded that she had broken up and sunk during the storm. However, a few days later, an Inuit seal hunter informed them that he had seen the ship about 45 miles away from their position. The crew successfully tracked the ship down, but after deciding that it was unlikely to survive the winter, retrieved most of the valuable cargo from the hold to be transported out by air. The Beichimo was subsequently abandoned. Over the next several decades, there were numerous sightings of the ship, and it was even boarded several times by different groups, but on each occasion they were either unequipped to salvage it or were hampered by extreme weather conditions. The last recorded sighting of the Beichimo was by a group of Inuit in 1969, 38 years after she was abandoned. In 2006, the Alaskan government began working on a project to solve the mystery of what became of the ghost ship of the Arctic, whether still afloat or on the ocean floor. To date, the fate of the SS Beichimo remains a mystery. <laughs>